This video will be about t-tests. In general, a t-test is any hypothesis test where the test statistic has what's called a t-distribution. This is a symmetric probability distribution with fatter tails than a normal, and its shape depends on the parameter, the number of degrees of freedom. The one sample location test on the mean is similar to the z-test, except we use a sample standard deviation s instead of the population standard deviation sigma, which is usually unknown. The test statistic is t is equal to x bar minus mu over s over the square root of n. Note the s in the denominator instead of sigma for the z-test. It's an estimate of the population standard deviation computed from the data. It can be shown that if our observations x1, x2, etc. are drawn from a normal distribution with mean mu, that is, they all have the same mean, then the quantity t follows a student's t-distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. We can use this to test the hypothesis that the population mean is equal to the spe specified value mu. Much more common than the one-sample t-test is the so-called two-sample t-test, which is used to compare the means of two populations. These tests are also often called student's t-test, after the statistician student, the pen name of the Irish statistician William Gossett. The two-sample test applies when we have an equal number of measurements from two populations and we want to test the null hypothesis that the means of the populations from which the two samples were taken are equal. There are two typical cases. First is the case where the two populations are assumed to have equal variances. When the variances are equal, the test statistic is t is equal to x1 bar minus x2 bar over the square root of the sum of the sample variances divided by n. x1 bar and x2 bar are the sample means of the two populations, s1 and s2 are the sample variances, and the quantity in the denominator is sometimes called the pooled variance. t is then basically the difference in the sample means compared to the variance of the two distributions. The number of degrees of freedom here are 2n minus 2. Degrees of freedom are the number of parameters in the calculation which are free to vary. In the calculation of t, there are two groups of n variables. However, the means of both groups are assumed equal under the null hypothesis, and the variances are assumed equal, giving two constraints. The number of degrees of freedom need to be counted because the distribution of t depends on it. Hence, in order to calculate significance levels and p-values for whatever value of t we observe, we need to know how many degrees of freedom to use. We can also do a two-tample t-test where the two populations have unequal variances. We calculate t using the same formula as before, but the number of degrees of freedom is much more complicated and I won't give the formula here. You might think that the number of degrees of freedom should be 2n minus 1. However, when we have two populations with unequal variances and we try to derive what the distribution of t should be, we run into a complication because it is not exactly a t-distribution. However, it can be shown that this distribution is very well approximated by a t-distribution with a different number of degrees of freedom. Sometimes these are called effective degrees of freedom, and this approximation is why their formula is so complicated. In practice, we should almost always be using libraries like SciPy for stuff like this. The SciPy function t-test int will perform t-tests for equal and unequal variances, and we will play with it in the workshop.